Meet the farmer boy who invented Ford. Henry Ford stood as an iconic American industrialist and business tycoon. The visionary founder of Ford Motor Company, he played a pivotal role in revolutionizing manufacturing by introducing the assembly line technique, enabling mass production on a grand scale. Ford's most notable achievement was crafting the first automobile that middle-class Americans could afford. This transformation fundamentally reshaped the 20th century transportation landscape by turning the car from a luxury item into an accessible mode of conveyance for the masses. Born on July 30, 1863, Henry Ford's early life unfolded on a farm in Springwells Township, Michigan. His father, William Ford, 1826-1905, hailed from County Cork, Ireland, tracing his ancestry to a family that had migrated from Somerset, England during the 16th century. Henry's mother, Mary Ford, Littegott, 1839-1876, was the youngest child of Belgian immigrants, tragically losing her parents during her childhood and being raised by the O'Hearns, their caring neighbors. Henry Ford had four siblings. His formal education reached eighth grade at Springwell's Middle School, a humble one-room schoolhouse, and he didn't attend high school. However, he later enrolled in a bookkeeping course at a commercial school. At 12, his father gifted him a pocket watch, setting the stage for his mechanical curiosity. Ford began dismantling and reassembling the timepieces of friends and neighbors, earning a reputation as a skilled watch repairman by the time he turned 15. Additionally, he regularly attended the local Episcopal church, walking for miles every Sunday when he was 20. The loss of his mother in 1876 deeply affected Ford, as he cherished her presence on the farm despite his disinterest in farming. His father anticipated him taking over the family farm one day, but Henry's heart was not in agriculture. In his own words, he expressed that he never had any particular love for the farm, it was the mother on the farm he loved. In 1879, Henry Ford embarked on a journey of learning as an apprentice mechanist in Detroit, beginning his exploration into the world of machines. His first stints were with James F. Flower and Bros, and later the Detroit Dry Dock Company. However, the call of his roots led him back to Dearborn in 1882, where he honed his skills on the family farm, particularly excelling in operating the Westinghouse portable steam engine. So remarkable were his abilities that Westinghouse eventually hired him to service their steam engines, solidifying his reputation in the engineering domain. During his formative years, Form experienced two profound events in 1875 which left an indelible mark on his future endeavors. At 12, he received a precious pocket watch, a cherished gift that ignited his fascination with mechanical workings. But perhaps the most pivotal moment was witnessing the operation of a Nichols and Shepard road engine, an extraordinary sight for the young Ford, as it was the first vehicle he encountered that didn't rely on horses for power. These experiences kindled his passion for machinery and laid the groundwork for his future innovations. Ford's relentless tinkering and inventive spirit led him to construct a steam wagon or tractor and even a steam car in his farm workshop. However, he concluded that steam power was unsuitable for lighter vehicles due to safety concerns associated with the boiler. Similarly, he was skeptical about experimenting with electricity then considering the high expense of laying trolley wires and the impracticality of available storage batteries. In the spring of 1893, Ford's first motor car hit the road, inspiring him to refine and test it over 1,000 miles until 1896. Undeterred, he crafted two more cars by 1896, setting the foundation for his legendary automotive empire. 1891, Henry Ford joined the Edison Illuminating Company of Detroit as an engineer. As chief engineer in 1893, he had the resources to experiment with gasoline engines, leading to the creation of his self-propelled vehicle, the Ford Quadricycle, in 1896. After meeting Thomas Edison, who supported his experiments, Ford built a second vehicle in 1898 with the backing of Detroit lumber baron William H. Murphy. This venture eventually led to the establishment of the Detroit Automobile Company in 1899, but faced challenges due to high costs and lower-quality automobiles, 
resulting in its dissolution in 1901. Undeterred, Ford and C. Harold Wills developed a successful 26-horsepower car in October 1901, prompting the formation of the Henry Ford Company. However, disagreements led to Ford's departure, and the company was renamed the Cadillac Automobile Company. Nevertheless, Ford continued his journey, collaborating with Tom Cooper to produce the powerful racer 999. He partnered with Alexander Y. Malcolmson, forming Ford & Malcolmson Limited to manufacture automobiles. However, sales were low, and a crisis arose when the Dodge brothers demanded payment for their parts supply from a contracted machine shop. In response, Malcolmson brought in additional investors and persuaded the Dodge brothers to become part of the new company. On June 16, 1903, Ford and Malcolmson transformed into the Ford Motor Company, with a capital of $28,000. The original investors included Ford, Malcolmson, the Dodge brothers, John S. Gray, Malcolmson's uncle, James Cousins, Malcolmson's secretary, and two lawyers, John W. Anderson and Horace Rackham. Gray was elected as the company's president to ensure stability due to Ford's volatile nature. Ford showcased a newly designed car on Lake St. Clair's ice, achieving a remarkable land speed record of 91.3 miles per hour, or 146.9 kilometers per hour over a mile in just 39.4 seconds. The success convinced race driver Barney Oldfield to take this new Ford model, affectionately named 999 after the fastest locomotive of the era, on a journey around the country. Oldfields' travels spread the reputation of the Ford brand far and wide across the United States, solidifying its presence in the automotive market. Additionally, Ford showed early support for the Indianapolis 500, further cementing the company's position in the racing world. In May 1943, Edsel Ford, president of Ford Motor Company, tragically died from cancer. Following his son's death, the aging and ailing Henry Ford, then nearing 80 years old, decided to take on the presidency. However, he was no longer in the best physical or mental condition due to previous cardiovascular events, leaving him inconsistent and suspicious. Despite reluctance from most of the directors, Ford had maintained de facto control over the company for the past two decades, and the board ultimately elected him as president once again. The company faced challenges during his tenure, experiencing a significant decline and losing over $10 million per month, equivalent to $169,120,000 today. Worried about potential disruptions to war production, President Franklin Roosevelt's administration considered a government takeover of the company, but the idea did not progress. Recognizing his deteriorating health, Ford stepped down as president in September 1945, passing the reins to his grandson, Henry Ford II. He retired from active involvement and sadly passed away on April 7, 1947, at age 83 due to a cerebral hemorrhage at his Dearborn estate, Fair Lane. Public viewing at Greenfield Village allowed thousands to pay their respects, and funeral services were held at Detroit's Cathedral Church of St. Paul. He was laid to rest in the Ford Cemetery in Detroit. Henry Ford's path to success was forged through perseverance, determination, and relentless hard work. He was born into a farming family and showed an early interest in machines and mechanics. Leaving home to work as an apprentice mechanist in Detroit, Ford began honing his skills, setting the stage for his future endeavors in engineering. One of the significant challenges Ford faced was his initial venture into the automobile industry. He experimented with gasoline engines and finally completed the Ford Quadricycle in 1896. Despite encountering setbacks and failed experiences, Ford's unwavering dedication pushed him forward. The Detroit Automobile Company, his first attempt at establishing an automobile business, met with little success and eventually dissolved. However, Ford remained undeterred, learning from his experiences and continuing to innovate. It wasn't a smooth ride for Ford. Labor disputes marred his legacy, including the infamous Ford Hunger March in 1932 and conflicts with labor unions. Ford's views on social issues and political involvement also drew controversy. Yet, despite the challenges and controversies, Henry Ford's indomitable spirit and innovative mindset profoundly impacted the world. 
His commitment to affordable transportation revolutionized mobility, transforming society and economies. His legacy continues to influence industries to this day. People can draw inspiration from Henry Ford's life as an example of resilience, innovation, and adaptability. He demonstrated that hard work, continuous learning, and an unwavering belief in one's vision can lead to extraordinary achievements. Despite facing failures and obstacles, he never gave up and constantly evolved, becoming an iconic figure in the automotive world. Moreover, Ford's emphasis on teamwork and collaboration highlights the importance of surrounding oneself with talented individuals and fostering a supportive work environment. His relentless pursuit of excellence and the drive to innovate can inspire people to push the boundaries of what is possible. However, it's essential to consider Ford's legacy's full spectrum, acknowledging his achievements and his shortcomings. Learning from his successes and mistakes can help individuals chart their own paths, aspiring to create a lasting impact and leaving a positive mark on the world, just as Henry Ford did through his transformative contributions. We hope that you enjoyed this video. Like it and subscribe to our channel to get notified about the latest content like this one. Thanks for watching.